So, you've claimed in your letter that you know what is the cause of my daughter's sickness. I could not be mistaken. No natural disease exhibit the same symptoms, and death is already very near. There remains, however, a day or possibly two of life. If the fatal seizure were at once arrested, her strength might possibly return. But all is hanging now upon the confines of the irrevocable. One more assault might extinguish the last spark of vitality, which is, every moment, ready to die. And what is the nature of the seizure you speak of? Your daughter is suffering from the visits of a vampire. The punctures which you've described are the insertion of those two long, thin, and sharp teeth which, it is well known, are peculiar to vampires. And every symptom described by the sufferer was in exact conformity with those recorded in every case of a similar visitation. If what you say is indeed the truth, what shall I do next? Do you have a sword? Get away from her, you monster! Ah! It's you. You will pay for what you did to my daughter! What are you doing? Stop! Ah! Where's Mademoiselle Carmilla? I don't know. I can't tell. She went there. Carmilla! She called herself Carmilla. Carmilla, yes. Aye, that is Milarka. That is the same person who long ago was called Mirkala, Countess Karnstein. Someone's approaching. The very man. My dear Baron, how happy I am to see you. I had no hope of meeting you so soon. You can calm down, dear friend. May I introduce to you Baron Vordenberg, a vampire hunter? I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut the introduction short. We got to act fast while the vampire is recharging, and I think I know exactly how to find its lair. Follow me. It looks like we've reached a dead end. Hmm. Do you mind giving me a hand? Certainly. There it is. The long-lost grave of Mercala. Baron, how can I thank you? How can we all thank you? You will have delivered this region from a plague that has scourged its inhabitants for more than a century. The horrible enemy, thank God, is at last tracked. Wait, I don't understand. How did you know where to find the grave? I have many journals of one of my ancestors that once delivered this village from the revenants that haunted it. However, it is enough to say that in very early youth he had been a passionate and favored lover of the beautiful Mercala. Her early death plunged him into grief, and when he found out that she has fallen to a state of vampirism, he couldn't bring himself to kill her. Instead, he pretended removal of her remains and a real obliteration of her monument, and he locked her up in a hidden tomb inside this very castle. Years later, when age had stolen upon him, he looked back on the scenes he was leaving, and a horror took possession of him. Perhaps he considered in a different spirit what he had done, so he drew up a confession of the deception that he had practiced, and made the tracings and notes which have guided me to the very spot. And tomorrow, the commissioner will be here, and the Inquisition will finally be held according to law. But what shall we do until then? It is surely not safe for my daughter to stay here. There's a good priest who lives but a little way from here. 
I'm sure you'll be able to persuade him to accompany you back to your schloss. But where exactly is your daughter? What? Where did she go? Hmm. It's okay. We brought you back to your room while you were unconscious. You are safe now. What exactly was she? You have heard no doubt of the appalling superstition that prevails in Upper and Lower Styria. The superstition, so we must call it, of the vampire. They present in the grave and when they show themselves in human society, the appearance of healthy life. The amphibious existence of the vampire is sustained by daily renewed slumber in the grave. Carmilla was one of those creatures, and she chose you to be her prey. I really thought she was my friend. The vampire is prone to be fascinated with an engrossing vehemence, resembling the passion of love by particular persons. In pursuit of these, it will exercise inexhaustible patience and stratagem. It will never desist until it has satiated its passion and drained the very life of its coveted victim. But it will in these cases husband and protract its murderous enjoyment with the refinement of an epicure and heighten it by the gradual approaches of an artful courtship. In these cases it seems to yearn for something like sympathy and consent. In ordinary ones it goes direct to its object, overpowers with violence and strangles and exhausts often at a single feast. Now, if you'll excuse me, there is still a lot of work that is left to be done. Baron Vordenberg, can I ask you a question? How exactly does it begin? I mean, how does one turn into a vampire? Assume at starting a territory perfectly free from that pest. A person more or less wicked puts an end to himself. A suicide under certain circumstances becomes a vampire. That specter visits living people in their slumbers. They die, and almost invariably in the grave develop into vampires. This happened in the case of the beautiful Mirkala, who was haunted by one of those demons. Will, will I be... One sign of the vampire is the power of the hand. The slender hand of Mirkala closed like a vice of steel on the general's wrist when he raised the wooden stake to strike. But its power is not confined to its grasp. It leaves a numbness in the limb it seizes, which is slowly, if ever, recovered from. I write all this, you suppose, with composure. But far from it. I cannot think of it without agitation. And to this hour, the image of Carmilla returns to memory with ambiguous alternations. Sometimes the playful, languid, beautiful girl. Sometimes the writhing fiend I saw in the ruined church. And often from a reverie I have started, fancying I heard the light step of Carmilla at the drawing room door. <laughs>